Hello everyone, today we will be taking a look at Magia Linux. This one is one of the very few left of only a handful really that still has 32-bit support, which I think is pretty awesome for 2020. So, let's take a look. Right, so here we are at setup. Um, now, I find it quite interesting, this panel here on the left hand side of the screen. Um, it sort of reminds me of what we had in older versions of Windows when you're installing it. Take things um, like Windows XP or Windows 98 or 95. It almost reminded me of that. Because um, you've got this funny panel on the left, and then you've got the dialog boxes on the right. Or in this case, it's slightly more integrated than that. Um, so yeah, it's quite interesting, really. They've sort of taken that and um, made it look modern, which I quite like, really. Right, so here we are at the logon screen. Um, now, I've signed on to this before because uh, last time it went slightly wrong but um, hopefully it will be okay this time it was the screen recording software which decided to screw up unfortunately it's right near the end as well it's always the way <laughs> right so here we are at the desktop and luckily the welcome screens come back up again um, so it's very neatly presented. Um, I like I like it when they have welcome screens and things because you can sort of get more familiar with the operating system and what's on it um, than if you're just thrown in without sort of knowing where everything is and how to use it. So yeah. Nice classic Firefox logo there. I believe this has actually got uh, one of the latest versions, so yeah, yep, it has Firefox Quantum. Okay, um, I've always preferred that one anyway. Yeah, so that all looks pretty good, and let's have a look in activities. Yeah, I decided to go with the GNOME desktop environment uh, simply because I quite like it. <laughs> I do like KDE as well, but um, not as much as I like GNOME. So another thing I noticed before, which I quite like, is the settings. Notice you have to authenticate, um, you have to put your password in every time um, you open it up. I mean... For some, some people, they might see this as a minor irritant, but I actually think it's quite good um, because it's surprising how much damage people can do um, if they can access your settings when you're not sitting at your desk or whatever. So, yeah. <laughs> Pretty good. So... It does have um, LibreOffice, so you've got all your productivity suite there. Um, obviously you've got Firefox as well, and I believe this might come with, I don't think it comes with VLC. Um, but yeah, you've got other things like GIMP and um, some of the classic ones, which I believe, I believe Cheese is in Ubuntu actually. Um, and Soft Phone. That thing. Oh, oh, that's a little um, VoIP thing by the looks of things. That's cool. Never even heard of that before. And Epiphany, that I believe that's a web browser. No, it's not. I'm sure there is a web browser called Epiphany. I think. Right, 
so that looks pretty good that looks pretty good um i mean you've got so many applications on here you could just use this as a day-to-day -day system right after install um so yeah that's all pretty good um web see what that opens oh it looks like a little custom made web browser Okay, is this one they've made? Oh, that's interesting. Made by Gnome. Let's see if it works, shall we? Oh yes it does, it's got a nice background image as usual. Right, so that is pretty much it. Um, this is a nice little system and it's all there, it's had no trouble from it whatsoever. Um, and that is pretty much that. We've got another tweaks, let's have a look at that. Okay. That's like another settings menu, isn't it? Okay, that's interesting. And another thing I noticed just before I leave this are... If I go down to it, are these two the same thing? Oh, okay, now that is very interesting so you've got another settings menu here so surely what's the difference between this one and this one then? okay you have network on this one yeah you do Oh, okay. All right, that's cool. So this, this one, uh, the Magia Control Center controls certain things that you can't access on the traditional settings panel. Oh, okay, I understand that. That's good. Okay, so that's pretty awesome. So I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to get the most important things onto this control center and um, then all the low level things they can be easily accessed on the traditional uh, control panel so that's pretty awesome i like that at least it appears that way anyway okay so that is pretty much it for this one i think um it's a nice little system actually yeah they haven't over egged the pudding um, they've got a, they've made it their own. Uh, they've got lots of their own things in this, um, and yeah, it's quite good. It's quite good. I'm pleasantly surprised at that. Right, so I believe that rounds up for today's video. Thank you all very much for watching. Um, this is quite an underrated little system, and I think the especially the 32-bit version. Uh, would come in very handy for older computers, seeing as this is obviously very lightweight anyway. Um, so yeah, thank you all very much for watching once again, and if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you all in the next video.